In this final recording, we're going to talk about a topic that the book throws into this chapter, but really is a chapter all its own about templates. Templates are a Microsoft Office concept, it's not just Excel. Templates allow you to create starting points. When you do File New, you get a bunch of choices, a bunch of spreadsheets, and if you click a link here someplace, it'll take you to the web, and there's a bunch of other templates, bunches and bunches of them to start. But I hardly ever use any of these pre-built templates because none of them quite meet my needs. So what I'm going to show you in this recording is how to create your own template and then how to use that template as a starting point for empty or for brand new workbooks. Not all workbooks start out blank. For instance, we've been using budgets in these recordings and here's my budget 2013. Maybe I'm getting tired of saving, of opening 2013, wiping all the data out, saving it as 2014, changing the date. I want to have a template that lets me just start a new year without having to go through all that rigmarole every single time. However, I don't want to have to, another risk of opening a document like 2013 and making changes to it, calling it 2014 for instance, is I might forget that I wanted to save as 2014 and if I hit a save and I make 15 minutes worth of changes here and then hit save I've just wiped out my 2013 workbook. Hopefully I have a backup and I can bring it back again. If I don't close it I can try undoing but there's certain things that Excel won't undo and you'd have to restore all those things. What a template allows you to do is create a starting point for a new Excel spreadsheet without risking that template. So the first thing I'm going to do is put this back, cancel. First thing I'm going to do is save this 2013 document as a template. It already has most of my formatting, it has all my layouts, it's got some extra junk in it, but we're going to take that out in just a little bit. But I'm going to use this as a starting point for my template. You don't have to do that. You can start with a blank template, a blank worksheet, <clears throat> and then save that as a template. But I already have one that's formatted, it has all the tabs that I need, it's got some color in it, it's got all the stuff in it that I need for my generic uh, yearly budget. So I'm going to use that and save it as a template. I'm going to do a file, <clears throat> save as. <clears throat> and the first thing I want to mention to you is that where you save it initially doesn't really matter because you're going to see something here in just a second. So I'm going to grab my Unit 4 folder and then I'm going to change its type. Right now it's an Excel workbook. Instead of saving this as a workbook, I'm going to save it as an Excel template. Notice the extension is different, XLTX instead of XLSX, T for template. So I'm going to save that, but as soon as I click that, excuse me, it changes folders to this custom office templates folder that's on your computer. Now if you store your template in there then it becomes available to you when you do a file new so that's not bad but for homework assignments and sharing them with me that's not where you want them to go. So be very careful when you change the document type to Excel template recognize that it's changing the location for this template to the custom office templates folder on your computer. Probably not where you want it. So choose the navigate, use the navigation tools over here to find the folder that you do want and then save it in there. But make sure this says Excel template. Notice now this has been changed and I should have changed the name, it changed it as budget 2013 XLT. So I'm going to do another save as, that was a mistake. Put it in here. But now, because it's already a template, it's there, but I want to change its name. And what many people like to do is stick the word template in the file name to make it more obvious. Because the extension doesn't make it very obvious that this is a template. If you look at the icon for it, it's pretty similar to the Excel icon. Okay, so it's very hard to see that this is a template. The only difference is kind of hard to see there is that little green line across the top says this is a template. So a lot of people like to put the word template in their document name. Right, so now I have budget template and notice the extension is XLTX and I have that template open. So the first thing I'm going to do is go into my January sheets all the way out to December. Scroll to A1 for some reason I'm scrolled way down. Here's A1 and I'm going to take out all of the actual data because when I start a new template 
when I start a new template, I want all that to be blank in every one of the months. So when January 2014 rolls around, I can enter in the January 2014 data when I actually have it. When the end of February rolls around, I can enter that. So now my template, my starting point, that's what we're building here is a starting point. My starting point has no actual data, but it does have a budget and it does have the chart ready to go. It does have the totals. It does have the summary page. Summary page is giving me some errors for right now, and that's okay. In the next unit in advanced functions, you'll learn how to set these up so that instead of showing an error, it just leaves this blank. Okay. All of this is ready to go except for one thing. You might remember in the, uh, I think it was the second recording, or maybe even the first recording, we realized that our budget needed to be modified because in October of 2013, we paid off our car. So there's no car payment. So in my two, th my all my budgets beyond 2013, I don't want a car payment. So I need to take that out because I don't want to set it to zero. So I'm going to go to January, December again, and I'm going to remove my car payment. I'm going to delete the whole row; shouldn't cause any trouble. And now my budget, monthly at least expected budget, is 36.25. But I, while we did that, we also bumped up the. Um, Actually, it might be out here in October. I can just steal these values. Yep. So I'm going to take all these values, copy them, flip over to January, and paste them in here. And that should have changed them in every month. So here's August. And no, it didn't change it there. I thought I had. That's interesting. All right, let's try this one more time. I'm going to go to October. I'm going to copy that data to the clipboard ahead of time. Let's try that again. Copy it to the clipboard, then select January through December. And in B5, paste. So there's my 400, there's my 250, and the savings has gone up and the tithing has gone up. And now I want to check my other months to make sure. And for some reason, it's not pasting into those other cells. I think it's because this chart is in the way. So if I'm going to modify those budgets for every month, I'm going to have to do it over and over and over again. So here's February. I can ungroup these. February, paste. March, paste. And I think the reason I couldn't paste it before is because this chart's here. And with that chart there, it just seems to not want to cover that data for some reason. Let me try it one more time from May to September, highlight all this data and paste. May has changed, how about June? Now it's worked, maybe because I didn't highlight the cells in advance. August, and now they've pasted in there. And October and November were already done. Okay, so now I got those in there. Still have to go to the summary and remove the car payment from here. Be careful, I'm not moving any extra stuff. Looks good. Delete that row. And change the budgets here again to match what our budgets were in October. And so there's the savings. Nope, that didn't do it. One more time. Copy, summary, paste. Okay, so there's our new budget. And now our starting budget worksheet is ready to go except for one thing. I have this year stuck over here. What I'm going to do is replace that year with just some text that says enter the year. And so now when I do that, remember we made formulas in all of our worksheets that says enter the year, enter the year, enter the year. Hopefully people will remember that in the summary we're supposed to enter the year. Now I'm going to save that and my template is complete. This is my starting point for a new year's budget. Now I can close that. And here's my budget template. And while I'm at it, here's my budget 2013 XLT. I can delete that. That was a mistake. And here's my budget template. Now, how do we use this template to create a new document? You can use Excel and do a file, and it, it, that's a little tricky area. The easy way to use the template is to simply locate it using Windows Explorer and double-click it. When I double-click it, it opens a brand new, this is a brand new Excel worksheet that's opening. And notice the name of it. 
Budget Template 1. You might notice when you open a blank workbook, it's called Workbook 1. Just a generic name. If I hit Save, it doesn't save it as Budget Template 1. It asks me, where do you want to save it? It's like a Save As. So this is a brand new document. Excel recognizes as a new document. I didn't open the template. I used the template as a starting point for a brand new worksheet. This is a brand new worksheet that already has all this other stuff in it. Notice the value here. The reason there's no value is this document really doesn't have a name. This is a temporary name, and until it gets a real name, it cannot find these sheet names. They'll come in there as soon as we save this. I do want to change the year. This is my 2014 budget. Enter. Okay. And now let's save this. As you saw before, if I hit save, it says, where do you want to save it? Which is if I never saved it. I want to go to my desktop, so I'm just going to hit the Browse button here and go to my Desktop Unit 4 folder and save this as Budget 2014. Here's a little shortcut. I'm going to click that once. puts the name in here, then I can tweak it and save this as 2014. Now that I've saved it, now this formula that we have in here has the ability to grab the file name, which includes the sheet name, and figure out what the actual sheet name is. And now that I have a 2014 budget, all I need to do to actually change it is go into January and start putting in some numbers and immediately I see that I have a problem with my template. My housing never varies. The actual payment for my house every month is exactly the same. For this example I'm just going to enter it but it would be nice if that was already in there for the next year's template. When I put in 2015 it would be nice if that 1375 in C5 was already in every one of these cells. It's really easy to do, obviously. We could just group these and enter 1375, but the purpose of a template is to save me from having to do all that stuff. Let me finish this up here, and let's say for utilities, it was 300, for food, 500, and then just a couple more values here. And save it. Now this is budget 2014. I'm going to close it. Here's my template. That template is completely unchanged. If I open it again <clears throat> by double clicking it, it creates a brand new document once again called budget template 1. Now I don't really want to do that so I'm not going to save this but I do want to change my template. To use a template, you double click it and it creates a new document that's called using the template. We use the template to create a new Excel worksheet. To use it, simply double click the file and it creates a new document. But what if I want to edit this? There's a mistake or I left something out. I want to change the colors, whatever. To edit this, you right click it and choose open. If you open the template that's different than using the template, it opens it and notice the title bar now says budget template. There's no one. And there's an extension, XLTX, letting you know you're actually messing with the template now. I'm going to select January to December. And in cell C5, I'm going to enter in the 1375 so that that's already there for every month. Everything else can potentially change, but my housing cost is always the same. So to save me from having to enter that all the time, I'm going to put it right into the template. Another thing that may be convenient to do while you're in your template is when you have all these sheets selected is to select cell A1 because wherever you leave the cursor in the worksheet, you've seen sometimes my worksheets are empty, sometimes the, cur the current cell is down here someplace. What I like to do for templates is to make sure that every sheet has A1 selected so when I come in there it's very obvious to see where we are. In the summary, however, I'm going to break that rule. I'm not going to go to A1. The first thing I want people to do when they open this template is come into G2 and enter the year. So I'm going to make that the current cell, kind of make it even, even easier yet to use this template. So now I can save this, and that has saved and changed this template, the template that is used as a starting point. So if I now open the template again, Okay. 
notice that my current cell is already G2, so I can just enter the year. If I go to any of these other worksheets, A1 is already selected, that's convenient. I suppose I could have had this cell selected. All that's up to you, which cells you have selected, because here's where I'm going to be entering my first data. I'm probably not going to be messing around up there. I'm not going to save this. I don't need to keep it. If I have, When I save it, then this value error goes away. So that's just a temporary thing because of this formula. We saw that in the 2014 shirt worksheet. So that's your introduction to templates. Normally, I create a worksheet, enter all the formulas, make sure everything works, put in some sample data, and then once I'm done, then save that worksheet, workbook, excuse me, as a template, taking all of the data out, but leaving the formulas, leaving the formatting, all the rest of those things. Another thing you might want to do in the future is lock some of these cells. That's a unit five topic, so watch for that. If you lock these cells in the template, then the user can't change them. I don't want the user messing with these totals down here because they're formulas. They shouldn't have to change those. I can lock these cells so that the user can't change them. That will cover in another unit, in the next unit, Unit 5, in a different recording. But for right now, you know how to create a template. You use a worksheet, save it as a template, take out all the generic data, and leave it blank. And then save it as a template. To use the template, you double-click the template file. Okay, double-click the template file, and it creates a new template with the temp a new worksheet can't talk this morning, a new workbook based on that template. This template concept, by the way, also applies to Microsoft Word. So you could create documents with starting points right, that are not blank, empty pages. They already have a bunch of stuff filled in, and they're templates. They're starting points. Same thing in PowerPoint. Right? Access uses a little less frequently, but in PowerPoint, you can create a template for a new presentation so that you have your own styles inside there. So that's the concept of a template. Hope that makes your life a little bit easier.